Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today's topic happens to be pedigrees. Now, many of you have probably heard of pedigrees, and where might that be? Well, maybe you are familiar with the dog food, eh, but not in this case. And those of you that like wrestling, yeah, yeah that's something called a pedigree, I guess, whatever the heck that is. But no, not in this case. What we're talking about is a chart of a family tree. And it usually tracks one trait, and it can be used to predict the offspring. So many of you have, for example, um, a pedigree if your dog happens to be a purebred, or a horse, or perhaps uh, rabbits and things like that. Well, we're going to be talking about human pedigrees. And there are going to be certain symbols we're going to use. For a male in a pedigree, we're going to use squares. Females are going to be circles. And if something is unknown, we'll use something that's a triangle. Now, when you're thinking about unknown, it's not what you think. So get your mind out of the gutter. Um, many times what happens if you look at old, old family registries, somebody might have had a baby that died at birth, and that'll, they'll only say, child died at birth, that won't list the sex. It's unknown. So you will find this many times when uh, you are searching around in family histories. Now, if the individual you have in a family has the trait that you're tracking, whatever it might be, then we're going to shade in that symbol. If somebody is known to be a carrier of the trait, but they don't have it themselves, then what we'll do is we'll shade in half of the symbol. So for example, my wife carries the trait for colorblindness. Now she's not colorblind, but she is a known carrier for it. And here's some other symbols. You know that the girls and guys, there's oftentimes a lot of chasing that goes on, and love may get into the picture. And if love continues, this wonderful couple may decide to get married. So we draw a line between them, and that's called the marriage line. And if love continues even farther, we'll drop a line straight down, and this becomes the children's line. Now, if they happen to have more than one child, then you might have something like this where you have many children listed on a children's line. So in this case, this family, this lovely family has three kids. Some more symbols. If somebody is adopted into a family, what we'll do is we'll put brackets around them. So that will show that they are not part of the original family. If there is a divorce, unfortunately, then what we'll do is we'll put a slash line between the people that are once upon a time married. If um, somebody dies, well, then what we'll do there is we'll X them out. Now, as you go back a long ways in a family, even if you go back three or four generations, most of the people are going to be dead, so you wouldn't go ahead and mark everybody. You would only be marking somebody that died if they died for some interesting or unusual reason, or if they died due to the condition that you happen to be tracking. And lastly, on this page, if you have twins, what you do is you draw a line like this, indicating they are born at the same time. Now, we can't tell what kind of twins these are. They might be identical, they might be fraternal, but they're twins. Okay, now on your sheet here, uh, I've provided for you this pedigree, so you shouldn't have to draw it. Now, if we were talking, for example, about, oh, let's say this person right here, and instead of saying, well, this person three lines down and a couple off to the right, we have a way in which we can number these people. And we start by each generation getting a Roman numeral. So this is generation one, this is generation one, and then this would be generation two, and then down here, 
this is all generation three. They're all the same generation. Then individuals are given regular numbers. The oldest is on the left. So each generation will number one, two, and then we'll start over the next generation. And you should be doing this on your sheet. And so on. Now I want you to shade in persons 2, 3, 2, 5, 3, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 6. And if you shaded them correctly, you should have done these. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a real trait. In this case, tongue rolling, the ability to do that. Now some of you are born without being able to do that. All of the non-rollers are going to be recessive. So that means that everyone that's shaded in here we're going to have as a non-roller. And let's give them the color. Now, instead of giving them a color, let's put a letter in their symbol. So every one of them are going to have what two letters? Two little r's. Next, now all the rollers will have at least a big R. So in those, let's put a, a big R. We know that the rollers have to be carrying at least a big R. All right, what I've done here, I made a couple changes with the colors and um, with the lettering, but it's the same sheet that you still have from before. Our next job then is to try to see if we can figure out what the second letter is for uh, each of these big R's. We know that they're carrying a letter. Now let's see if we can figure out what the second letter is for each. So let's start with the people in this first generation. Person 1, 1, and 1, 2. We know that they had a child here with two little r's. Well, that didn't just come out of nowhere. That means that one parent had to be carrying one little r, and one little parent, one other parent, had to be carrying the other r. That means both parents are carrying the little r. One has to come from one parent, one has to come from another parent. Let's look down here. Persons 2, 1, and 2, 2. They had a kid with two little r's, so they must be carrying a little r. Over here, person 3, 4. Well, person 3, 4 had one parent with two little r's. That means this parent has to give each of their kids a little r. This one also must be carrying a little r. How about persons 2, 6 and 2, 7? Well, they had a little r, little r kid, so they must be carrying two little r's as well. Um, let's go to now the other ones. So now we have 3, 1, 3, 5, and 3, 7. Well, this is a little more difficult to try to figure out what's going on with them. What could their second letter be? Could be big R, could be little r. If one parent gave the big R, then the other parent could either give a big R or a little r. We just don't know. In cases that we don't know, the only thing we can do is to put a question mark. So there, we just don't know. Over here, we figured that out. Now this one, we had a little r, little r kid, so we know that that second one has to be a little r. Over here, we're not quite sure. We don't have enough information. So when we don't have enough information, we put question marks. All right, so that ends our information here today on pedigrees. I want you to go back and write down something in your summary area and make sure that you put something in the briefs, perhaps a question that you have. We will see you next time.